Welcome back to another video and with another step-by-step -step guide. Today we are going to take a look on how to install PFSense on Proxmox. So we are going to virtualize our network management with PFSense. Now this brings advantages and disadvantages, which I will leave towards the end of the video. And I'll be using the Zima board with the Sabrent SSD. If you don't know this mini server, I will leave a link right over here on the YouTube cards. And we will start by implementing PFSense on Proxmox. So if you haven't installed Proxmox and you don't know how to do it, also guides right over here, which are really, really easy. Now, I will be using the Zima board, but you can use or you can try on your older PC. And if you only have one gigabit port, probably it's a good idea to get one of these, which is a gigabit to PCIe and you can add another port so that at the end of the implementation, you can put in the server between your router and your network so that this one does all the management. Now, talking about machines that are on our network, if you are watching this video on your Windows 10 or Windows 11 and you still haven't activated your license, don't forget to check out KeysFan where you will find budget official OM keys at an affordable price and with the coupon code that you can see on screen, you'll get an extra discount. So just in case you want to check that out, I will leave the link down below near to the link with the hardware that we are using and some links over here so that you can check all the guides because this is a one on one step by step guide. And talking about that, let's start with the PFSense installation in Proxmox. So the first thing that we will need to do is we already have our Proxmox installed right over here. We took a look on how to install all, the, all these services in a matter of a few seconds, seconds, not minutes. Actually, um, Home Assistant is right over here. And this was the fastest installation that I was able to do so far. So don't miss the video. I will leave a link right over here. Just awesome solution for someone that wants to put Home Assistant on a mini computer, mini server that we have at home or any other server that we want. So we have all these and now we want to add another service, which is the management of our network with PFSense. So let's go to PFSense. Let's go to download and on downloads, let's select the AMD 64 version. The installer will be the ISO and then I'm in Europe. So I would choose Germany, but you will have to select depending on your location so that it's a faster download. I've already downloaded to my computer so let's move ahead. Now right over here on Proxmox I will need to upload the image that I just downloaded to my computer which is a Mac but you can do it on your Linux or on your uh, Windows computer. So let's go to local PVE where we have our ISO images and if uh, you will start here probably just select ISO images and then upload. And in my particular case I will select the file. I've got here OPN Sense which will be the next video so that we can compare one and another a little bit. But we are going to install PF Sense and let's press open and right now upload. And done. We have the image of PFSense on our Proxmox server. So now we can go back and let's create a virtual machine. So let's press on create virtual machine on the general tab. Let's put in the name PFSense. You can call it anything that we, you want. So let's press next. The OS, we are going to leave it as it is, Linux and so on and so forth. We are going to select the ISO image that we just uploaded to our Proxmox service. So it's PFSense and let's press next. On system, we are going to leave it as default. On disks, we can leave it as default or let's change it for a bit and let's put it 40 gigs, although it's too much, but 40 gigs. We have two terabytes right over here from Sabrin, so we have available storage with no issues. Let's press next. On CPUs, let's put two, although one is enough. On memory, two uh, gigabits, it's not necessary. So let's put in one gigabit of memory. The maximum that I've seen in all my tests is about 500 megabytes, so nothing special. Let's move ahead. And here on network, we have two choices because we will need to add another network later on. We can remove this one and then add the two or we can leave this one as it is. I'm going to leave it as it is and press next. And then lastly, we will need to confirm. Let's press finish. And here we are. We have our virtual machine created right over here, which is the VM 107. And uh, it will 
change to PF Sense as it did right now. So we have almost everything ready for the installation. One more step, which is to go to the hardware, because we have two Ethernet ports on the Zima board, which we will need to place in then near our router. It will receive signal from our router and then it will transmit to the rest of our network so that we can manage everything. In your case, if you are using a computer that only has one, then I would suggest one of these. Now, here we only see one network device. And if we are going to add, we just need to go here, add network device. And in this particular case, I already have the zero, which is this one, I would need to add the VMBR1 and press add. Just need to press it right over here. But in case that you come to this menu and you only see one, what happens is that you will need to go to your server and in here on the network, you will need to add your other device. In my particular case, initially I had the two physical devices which are the ports right over here, but I only had one virtual, which was the VMBR0. I had to create a Linux bridge right over here, and I had to put in here the VMBR1, and it will always add up. So now it says two, but in my particular case, it appeared one. And then on the bridge ports, I will need to copy this number right over here because we all already had this one. And I copied this ENP3S0 and put it right over here like ENPS30 and then press create and that's how I created this Linux bridge so that when we go to one of our virtual machines like PFSense we can then add network device and right over here we just need to select the VB, VMBR1 press S and add. That is it. Right now the PFSense virtual machine will have access to the two ports that we have on the Zima board. That being said, let's start by changing one other thing, which is the on the options. Let's select start at boot. Yes. And press OK, because this is a service that will provide Internet to all our devices, including this one once we deploy it. So this is a important step. And let's go to our console. And now we are ready to install. So just select start now. Okay, so didn't touch anything at all until this screen. So we are going to accept. Now install PFSense and uh, continue with the default key map. Auto ZFS, yes. Install, proceed with the installation, yes. No redundancy, yes. We are with a virtual machine, so it's really easy to keep backups. Don't forget to keep backups, so we don't need anything at all right over here. So let's go here, press space to select the hard drive that we have, which is a virtual hard drive, and then press yes for the installation. So it will do its thing once again. And the installation is now finished. So would you like to uh, make any final manual modifications? No. And installation is complete. Would you like to reboot into the installed system now? Yes. And we are on this screen, which says, should VLANs be set up right now? No, we don't want VLANs at this moment. So, and we will be able, if we want later on, to put it on PFSense. Press no, enter the one interface name for out or A for auto detection. Now, the way that uh, I'm working with the Zima board is that um, the first one that I will select will be VTNet1. So let's put in VTNet1. And the second one will be the LAN, which is VTNet zero. But this is something that you can play around with your computer. And as a last resort, you can then change the cables and everything will be okay. As long as we only have two, it's easy to manage. So let's press enter. And there we go. We have one for VTNet one and LAN for VTNet zero. Do you want to proceed? Yes. And go on. And there we go. Installation is finished. Now we will be able to check out PFSense in just a second. Just to explain that we have our LAN address right over here on VTNet 0, but we don't have yet a one address. I will need to deploy this machine with my router. So I'll need to connect my router to the Zima board and then the other cable will come out from the Zima board and enter one of my switches that then will 
pushing the network and internet to all other devices. And that is it, the setup. Now, we have the address right over here, so let's go to our browser and 192.168.1.1 and there we go. We will have this screen, but it's okay, so let's go and accept the risk and continue. Right over here, the username is admin and the default password is pf Send. So let's go and sign in. I did already change with other tests that I'm using, so never mind. And here we are on the PFSense dashboard. So let's press on next. We can um, move ahead and press right over here, for example, and then uh, do the wizard later on. But let's move on and do it right now, which is really quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the host name as it is. PF Sense, it's okay to me. The domain name, it's always, it's also okay to me. Unless you have something already in place, you will want to change this. But if you are using this without any other modifications on your network, then it will be okay. So press next. Right over here, I will leave as it is, and I'm on UTC, so okay. If you are not, just select where you are. And then I will leave DHCP for my WAN, because I want my router to push in an IP address, an external IP address to my PFSense machine. And right on the bottom, I will disable the block private network so that we can communicate. This is something that you probably want to try it out as well if you have any issues with the internet and so on and so forth. Probably it's right over there. The IP address, we can change it, but I'm happy with this for the tutorial, but it will be up to you keeping this one or changing and subnet mask as 24 as well. And we can change the password right over here. So let's put in a new one and that is it. Press next and reload. And congratulations, if you made it so far, you have PFSense on your machine, on your virtual machine in this particular case, on the Zimmer board, working without any issues whatsoever. So let's press on finish and we will go to the dashboard. So here on the dashboard, uh, I don't have any services yet, but we will see that I have no WAN IP address because it's not connected to the um, bridged port on my router, but we do have a LAN address and everything is working as expected. And we will have a lot of options. Now, we are not going to see anything here about PFSense in terms of configuration because this is, I would say, a working progress once we install and deploy a software that it's a lot more capable than the software that we have on our router. So we will have all the advantages. And of course, there are a lot of content on the YouTube and on the web that will help us. To, do I want to use this service? Do I want to use that service? Okay, I want to install this, I want to install that, and so on and so forth. Now, in the next video, we will take a look also at OPN Sense, see the advantages and disadvantages, or at least the looks of it. And one more thing to finish up this video, which is quite long. Now, advantages and disadvantages of using PFSense on a virtual machine, such as Proxmox installed on the Zima bot. Now, the first advantage and more important, in my opinion, is that we will have one single piece of hardware to have multiple services. In this particular case, we already have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven services plus the network management. So we are talking about eight services that if we wanted to deploy one in each machine, let's say that we would use a Raspberry Pi or a Zima bot for each one of these, we would require eight different computers to run. So this is the beauty of we are running everything on the same machine. And that's also the biggest downside if, if, if my server goes down, all the services will go down. Now, I don't mind because we will make it up, but in particular case of the network management, if our server goes down, all the devices on the network will go down. And in my opinion, this is the biggest con. On the pro side, having virtual machines backups are very easy. And if we want to migrate from one machine to another one, and also really easy, different from touching bare metal and removing this one and placing another one. So the device just breaks. As long as we have backups, it will be very easy to replace the hardware with a replacement and then just deploy our virtual machines in one instance. Problems that we might face using this. If the PFSense server goes down, 
our server is dependent from a virtual machine. So this is not the ideal. If our server goes down, the virtual machine inside which is PFSense will go down and all the devices on the network will lose internet connectivity. So our server is dependent on a virtual machine and this might create a problem. If this is our home lab server and we are booting frequently, installing and playing around with it, I would suggest not use it like that. If it is a server that you just install Home Assistant, Plex, Ambient, so on and so forth and leave it as it is, then PFSense being there will bring no issues whatsoever. But this is something that you will need to consider on your case and try it out and see for yourself if you like it or not. Now, that being said, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget that usual thumbs up right over there, which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. My name is Roberto George, and as always, I'll see you guys on the next one.